so uh, we had a uh, some really great sessions today and uh, you know i'm just going to talk about uh, what security is in a hyper connected world so can i can i have my slide uh, on screen please so uh, you know while i talk about that let me just tell you what hyper connected really means you've been hearing about all the data uh, you know telecom related data all this while but let me just sum it up for you right around uh, 1.1 billion mobile registered users 900 million broadband connections um around 159 million 5g subscribers so we have more broadband connections than the population of europe we have uh, more 5g subscribers than uh, most of the countries only eight countries have population more than the 5g subscribers that we have and we have around 1.2 mil billion uh, internet connections how is that for hyper uh, you know connected and uh, the story doesn't end there right because now we have devices also this was all human connections devices 50 billion iot sensors and devices expected to be connected uh, by next year that's the kind of uh, connection we're talking about and then india is on its path to become a 1 trillion dollar uh, digital superpower uh, over the next 6 uh, years right so that all sounds very encouraging but Uh, the job of the security folks in these companies becomes more and more difficult so let me just tell you how difficult it is so essentially um, you know india ranked fifth most breached country in the world last year uh, nothing to gloat about in fact we were seventh the year before so we are actually moving up the ranks in being breached as well right that's about 5.3 million uh, you know stolen data records and about uh, you know which is though it's lower than the previous year but you can imagine the kind of Uh, numbers of records that are being stolen uh, some companies these, were, these have all been globe you know publicly reported you'll find them on the internet if you search more about them i'm sure you would have heard of the breaches that have happened in some of these companies you must have been reading about them the the idea is that's the kind of breaches that we are seeing and now it's becoming all public you know about 761 uh, uh, attacks per minute that's the kind of uh, you know pace that we are really seeing average cost of a data breach has been 17.9 crore and the highest has been around 19 crores any guesses what kind of attacks were those which had were the costliest any guesses well okay ransomware but there's a category social engineering right uh, uh, according to verizon there was an interesting piece of information from verizon about 3 years ago and uh, that still holds relevant 85% of all breaches involve human uh, interaction which is social engineering right with phishing and wishing being the top of the uh, funnel that is the highest number of attacks that happened whatsapp review scam there has been floating around nowadays i don't know how many have been fallen victim to that or actually received a message from somebody on whatsapp anybody everybody i'm sure yeah so it's kind of uh, become so common you got a message from somebody saying that you know you click on these subscribe to this youtube channel will give you for every subscription will pay you a sum of money and many people have been conned uh, because of that because they never pay anything it's a scam right ransomware uh, about 74% of mid to large enterprises last year were hit by ransomware out of which about 44% ended up paying the ransom 100 to 500000 us dollars that's the kind of uh, you know money that is you know being given that's how it's happening uh, configuration errors i mean hybrid work is great we we've, we've seen work from home happening and last year uh, you know ever since the pandemic everyone's been talking about hybrid work but that has been a major cause of uh, security breaches because employees are stressed out they're working late nights maybe you know all those things have happened and as a res result of which they make mistakes and those mistakes can be very very costly but the most dangerous one now that is emerging are deep fakes okay uh, you might have read the news about and of course is a popular figure you all we all know him but there was a deep fake video of him that had come uh, in the news recently uh, of course it was caught um, and of course some headlines as you can probably see there was a you know a finance worker in hong kong that kind of transferred uh, 25 million dollars after his CE cfo in a meeting video conference meeting with other executives that this person recognized ordered him to transfer 25 million dollars incidentally neither the cfo nor the other people who were there and were real they were all deep fakes and because of that he actually ended up transferring 25 million dollars that's the kind of news that happened and then the remaining news all the three three of these these are all from india 
okay they've all been on all the major uh, news websites you'll find that you know this is a kind of attack that is happening so for me if i see an attack that is happening to very close by to a friend i can imagine that now this is really really come in and is going to come become very worse i've heard of friends who have actually fallen victim to whatsapp the 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 deep fake kind of attacks where somebody gets a call from a uh, mother of somebody gets a call that you know uh, the son is pleading that i i need dire help and transfer the money the woman ends up transferring the money that's the kind of attacks that is really happening and they becoming more and more serious there has been a 10x increase i mean uh, no guesses on that but uh, deep fakes can cause a lot of damage to enterprises also now imagine a very senior and respected member of a company announcing that he is leaving the company and is actually a deep fake that tumbles the stocks of that company okay things like that fake news about a company a key executive talking bad things about the customer it can be easily spoil it can easily spoil the reputation of uh, that company so those are the, some of the things that can happen uh, can be caused by deep fakes and by the way it's real it's happening it's becoming more and more worse okay um so deep fakes obviously have hogged the entire limelight so that's why you know i just spent one slide on the other threats that happened last year i'll not spend too much time on all of them i'm sure that you would have heard about some of them uh, third party exposure while a lot of large companies end up fortifying their entire networks they work with a lot of partners we talked about a partner ecosystem today right so they work with a lot of partners whose networks may not be secure so that's a really good target for a lot of these uh, you know hackers to get into and you know and use that as a conduit to access the company's network that's the way that people are using cloud vulnerabilities a uh, number of workloads that are moving to the cloud is increasing okay it was i think some 44% last year this year it's going to be about 56% or so that's the kind of uh, workload increase that we're going to see and cloud of course becomes a major target for hackers and uh, you're going to see more and more cloud vulnerabilities kind of emerge i'll not spend more time on this it iot i will talk about in a minute but these were the major threats of 2023 what's in store this year ai we are using and exploring for a lot of great use cases but then so are the hackers they are also using ai to power their attacks okay uh, deep fake as a service as less it costs as less as 8 rupees there is a website that is advertising i'll create deep fakes for you for 8 rupees that's the kind of attacks that are happening uh, it's a ticking time bomb for ekyc okay so it's just waiting to happen uh, so basically they are getting more and more advanced uh, nowadays you can tell a phishing scam uh, by the mail the poor grammar in english that comes in a email but jenai is going to solve all that is going to write finely crafted email and you won't be able to make out that it's a fake because the gr grammar in english is perfectly fine right well yeah i mean if if you so so you need to have that kind of practice but a lot of people fall victim to uh, phishing so just uh, you know Uh, these are some of the you know uh, uses of ai in different functions and of course about 50% of the organizations are going to use cyber security according to a survey that uh, was done by cmr other top threats of 2024 okay security in hybrid work environments more supply chain attacks supply chain right you that's the easiest way to hack into any web network you you install a patch update to a software which is already infected by uh, you know hacker and that kind of leaks into the network and rest they say is a history and we know some of those solar winds and all that so a lot of attacks have happened you can expect more of those 400% rise in it iot uh, kind of attacks because there is integration happening between it and ot networks so expect a lot more uh, increase in the attacks uh, on on critical infrastructure whether it's private or government that is likely to happen right uh, so basically uh, you know i'm seeing that a lot of other attacks are going to increase in this year just real quickly this was the last i just added it quickly recently because apparently uh, these three companies got hit by a ransomware attack on in infosys so just a uh, yeah, recent news so the way forward i saw that in in the last three years we've seen security as one of the top agendas of most enterprises when it comes to spending on security and i'm sure that now that we are doing we've entered 2024 we're going to do some more research and find out i'm sure it will remain in the top 5 maybe it will remain in the top investment for uh, most companies as far as it spending is concerned so what tech practices to adopt uh, of course uh, uh, zero trust architectures have to be enhanced that is one way of 
kind of preventing or being safe from these uh, attacks. Multi-factor authentication, we're seeing the market grow by 18% as far as multi-factor authentication is concerned, right? Extended data addiction, detection and response. Uh, you cannot have just one tool for everything. You need to have a platform that can, can kind of detect and monitor and protect against all the attacks that's uh, required, okay? Uh, edge security becomes very important. Uh, you have laptops and devices all over the place, so a lot more focus is required to protect against those. And the latest edition is quantum cryptography. A lot of discussion is happening around that to kind of, uh, you know, on, on security front. So what should be the new approach to security? What I feel is that, uh, you know, uh, prevention is better than cure. It's always important to stay on guard. Security is no longer something that you'll wait and watch for something to happen and then do something about it because it takes a long time, money and reputation to do the cleanup act. It's best to be proactive. Uh, make sure that, you know, you're kind of uh, uh, on top of things. Uh, employee training, I hear you talked about, uh, we just discussed that quickly. Um, being able to have a proper incident response because when the moment a company gets attacked, a lot of things have to happen. A lot of people have to be informed. How is your, uh, you know, what's your incident response? What is the speed of that? A lot of companies have now started testing that out to make sure that things happen real, real quickly. Uh, of course, adherence to compliance and other regulatory norms that has to remain, you have to remain on top of it. And third party risk management, right? Uh, where you have less protected networks of partners and you want to be able to protect those so that you don't end up getting hacked on somebody else's account. So we can easily say this is the year of the CISO. Uh, but before we go start celebrating, let me tell you what it really means to be a CISO now. There's risk, there's legal charges, there is security strategy, there is not just technology, right? Crisis management, compliance, uh, you know, in fact, some of the people, CISOs of the companies, uh, you know, that were responsible for supply chain attacks are still facing legal charges. They have to kind of uh, face a lot of that globally. Expect that to also happen in India as well. So a lot more responsibility for the CISO is expected this year. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that's happening. So anybody who's here, who's a CISO here, or responsible for security, it's going to be a tough year. So that's all I had to say. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I hope you found it useful.